We're mainly focusing on our Spectralis OCT platform. So this is our platform for the posterior segment, imaging the back of the eye and the retina. So you can see here that we have this absolutely lovely live confocal scanning laser image. So this is our infrared image, 815 nanometers. Um, our patient isn't dilated, we're in this bright room um, and the light is completely invisible. So my colleague doesn't perceive anything um, here, there are bright flashes or anything. What's really nice about it being live is if I see anything that maybe I'm a little bit concerned about or anything that I want to scan, I can literally just point and click. You can see at the moment, the images are moving around a little bit. That's just because my colleague's eyes are moving, it's normal, microsaccades, um, blinking as normal. But what I can do is just hold down this joystick button and that engages my active eye tracking. So you can see we've got this green box now and that's the eye still moving, but you can see that up here, I still have a really nice high quality image. If I just click now, I'm acquiring that image. I don't need to worry about blinks. I don't need to worry about eye movement or the head tilting, anything like that. And that's because the eye tracking's working and it's locked that image onto the screen now. So it's really, really nice because it also enables us to build the image to up to 100 frames. So if I take the eye tracking off, you can see that working. So you see how the image right now is a little bit grainy? That's because it's just one frame. But what we're gonna do is engage the eye tracking allow the image averaging to build, and you can see it's building to up to 100 frames. And you see how as that image builds, we get really, really nice delineation of the retinal layers. We build to a really nice high quality image. So this means that we're gonna get more clinical confidence because we can see the retinal layers really, really nicely and really nice and clearly. It does also enable us to do the image averaging across a full volume scan. We can do multiple B scans moving through the retina. I can move this B scan as well wherever I want it to go, which is really nice. So you can really move the device and the scans to where the pathology is and scan it in really nice high detail. And we have image averaging across the full volume scan. So each B scan in the volume scan is average. And you can see that happening now. Nathan can blink no problem if he does that. He'll close his eyes and then it'll pick up and keep scanning from the same location. So you can see I'm hardly touching the device. It's really, really easy to use. It's really intuitive because everything's just live on the screen there for you to see. Some of the unique technologies it employs are the confocal scanning laser. So this is a lovely infrared image. We can image straight through media opacities and undilated pupils. So even in bright lights, like in this room, um, we're able to image. Um, that's really nice in a high street optometry practice because you don't necessarily have to dilate the patient. And of course, it also does simultaneous OCT imaging. So at the same time that we take this confocal scanning laser image, we also take this really nice OCT image. The other thing it enables us to do is we're actually able to uh, set an image as a reference and um, for progression purposes this is great so when the patient revisits for the second third fourth time we're able to re-scan back in the same location to within one to two microns for retina scans so this means that our um, progression and accuracy of that repeatability of the system is really really highly accurate and that means that we can detect real change over time and we've got more clinical confidence that we're looking at real change as perhaps opposed to variability in the scans between visits caused by just the device tolerance. We have recently launched the Spectralis Shift technology. This allows us to increase or decrease the A scan rate in the system. So we can decrease it down to 20 kilohertz, which is um, a slower scan speed. The benefit of that is you're giving a longer exposure time when you're imaging the eye. And what it actually means is that you can um, build images in more challenging patients. So for example, if your patient has a media opacity like a cataract, having that slightly slowed down speed is going to give you a little bit longer on the exposure time to really build a nicer, higher quality image than where traditionally it might be quite difficult to capture an image in that patient. But we can also speed up as well. So we can go to 125 kilohertz. This is really great for really dense scan patterns such as OCTA. It means we can um, get to about 30% quicker speed than we could before. We do also have our anterior platform here as well. That's our platform for imaging the anterior segment of the eye. And that's like a kind of biometer, corneal topographer, and OCT imager all in one. But all the measurements are based off OCT images, uh, high resolution swept source images. And in a single shot, we'll take an image of the entire chamber angle. If I press the button, it will take a scan. And as quick as that, I've captured my cornea scans. So just with that single press of the button, and we get all of our corneal tomography maps. And you can select anything from axial curve, 
curvature, uh, posterior elevation, pachymetry, you have many, many options. So with the high resolution OCT images, we can look at chamber angles, we can look at um, damage that might be consistent with glaucoma. Um, with all of our um, anterior segment maps, uh, we're able to look for ectatic changes. Um, biometry is useful um, when we're looking at myopia control. So there's many different applications for the device. Post-COVID, what we have seen a huge amount of um, is a lot of diagnostic hubs um, appearing. So we've been very much involved in that. We've set up diagnostic hubs for retina in Moorfields Eye Hospital, for example. This is to really deal with the COVID backlog um, in ophthalmology. Um, and typically these uh, nice sort of one-way systems that the patients come in, they get all their diagnostic tests done. It's kind of like a virtual clinic and then the clinicians will review it um, at a later date. And it's a very efficient way of moving through patients and getting their diagnostic scans done. So we've installed a lot of spectralis and a lot of anterior in these diagnostic hub setups. Works really nicely because the two platforms connect together via our HiX2 software. And that's the other thing that we're seeing happening is the HiX2 software is being um, put out a lot across ophthalmology as well at the moment. And the way that connects all of our devices together and even some th third party instruments as well has been super popular. And that obviously works really nicely in a diagnostic hub environment where you want everything in one platform.